Hey guys, welcome. Good morning. It is Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. and uh, we are here for um, church at home. I hope that you are doing well um, at your home. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm still in my house here. I have just uh, switched uh, sides of the table uh, <laughs> that I am uh, using. Um, so now you get to see some uh, little pictures of my family right back here, right there. That's a young couple right there about to get married. That's a, a young couple about to have a baby. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, I hope, uh, I hope that you are, um, I hope that you're having a great weekend. Um, if you are joining us, um, feel free to, um, to, to, to comment and let us know that you are here. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, want to encourage you, you know, you can always, uh, invite friends to join us, um, just by sharing this on your page and inviting your Facebook friends to join you for church. Uh, this morning, uh, I am here uh, with my uh, my cup of coffee here. This is uh, a a Starbucks mug uh, with a snowman. So um, yeah, uh, I hope that uh, I hope that it's been a great weekend for you. Um, you know we uh, we are looking forward to being back together here um, soon. Hopefully, um, I, I can't tell you exactly when. Um, you know it could be. Um, you know, we're going to talk about it um, and make a plan um, for this coming week and decide whether we can be in person or not. Um, but I know <clears throat> a lot of you guys are, you know, um, there's been quite a number of people who have had uh, COVID in our congregation and some are still struggling. So we want to continue to pray for them, um, continue to pray for those who are affected um, and uh, really, uh, really glad <clears throat> really glad that we can still meet together um, even though we are not together um, so hey welcome to my house um, and uh, hey uh, hi to those of you who have joined me so far so glad that you are here and it's true the sun is shining today um, that's one of the reasons why I was like well there's there's some light coming in the window here and this is nice um, you know and uh, and so yeah I'm very excited I'm very happy to be here with you. <clears throat> um, just a, a few uh, housekeeping things um, before we uh, we jump in today. Um, one is uh, that if you need anything during this time, you know, even though we're not meeting in person, um, you can still contact our uh, office. Um, the office is uh, somebody will be in the office. Uh, Melinda will actually be in the office uh, from nine to to one. Uh, Monday through Friday, and so she can help you um, get uh, whatever you need um, there. Um, at the same time, I um, want to encourage you, if you are a member of New Bethel, and uh, you you call this your church home, you're, you're a member, you're, you're regularly attending, you know, and you want to, uh, you know, continue to support the, the ministries and the missions of New Bethel, I want to encourage you to give online. Um, just go to our website, and uh, you'll see a a, a link there um, say it'll say donate um, and so you can give online um, or you can uh, drop off uh, any offering um, tithes or offerings you can drop off at the church office um, during this time that we're not uh, having a, a collection so um, before we do anything else uh, I want to go ahead and pray um, we're gonna pray for um, our time together and pray for uh, those who are still um, struggling, those who are still recovering. I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. I just have a little bit of a cough. Um, you know, my, uh, my wife seems to have turned a corner a little bit, and, and she's, uh, she's starting to show some improvement. Um, but I know some um, are having a harder go at it, and so we want to we wanna pray for them. Um, so let's pray, and then um, we will uh, we'll open the word together. Okay. God, we give you thanks. No matter what our circumstances are, God, we thank you because you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy, God, of our um, thanksgiving. God, we, we come to you today and, and, and we, are, we are happy to be with you, but God, we are also happy to be with each other. Um, 
God, we give you thanks for these methods that we can connect, these methods that we can communicate. Um, God, I pray that you would use <clears throat> this time, these tools to grow us, that we might um, be um, remade um, in your image. God, I pray that you would use these to um, make yourself known to us and to those who don't know you. God, that you would be famous. God, we want to know you today. And God, we lift up those that are, that are um, battling um, COVID today, those who are, who, are, who are struggling with that. Um, we pray for, for help. We pray for healing. We pray for comfort. God, we pray for those who are um, dealing with a number of other things. God, you know exactly who they are. You know exactly what they're dealing with. And God, we pray that you would move. Remove any barriers, God, between you and them. And may we experience peace and joy today. God, speak through me today. May my words be your words, God. And may you receive all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So uh, last week, we kind of began this topic of reset. You know, it's a, it's a start of a new year. It's a new, uh, a, a new, a new season of life. Um, you know, we're getting ready to have a, a, new, um, a new government takeover. Um, we're going to um, begin to have... Uh, new things and and so certainly uh, it's a great time to look at our lives and and to reset um, I think we can all look back at 2020 and say man 2020 wasn't exactly how I wanted it to go um, 2020 wasn't that much fun or 2020 wasn't that um, you know uh, I don't know just it, it wasn't it wasn't what we wanted um, and uh, and certainly at the same time uh, spiritually speaking, um, and otherwise, you know, we can look at our own lives and say, man, 2020, uh, just, I, I, I ended the year, um, not in a place where I wanted to be. Um, you know, and so a lot of times people begin a new year and they come up with new year's resolutions. They come up with goals. They come up with different things. And, and those are, those are, um, those are great to do, you know, but, uh, what we're looking for um, in our own lives, you know, is we're looking for lasting change. We're looking at something that that is going to not just benefit us this year or benefit us next year or for, you know, a little while, but, but something that's going to be um, uh, beneficial for, for eternity. Uh, something that is going to, um, you know, live on and... Um, and so we look at, you know, we look at this time right now and we say, man, I'm going to reset. I'm going to take a look at things. And so last week we looked at, uh, you know, how we should reorient our life around Christ. Um, how, you know, we ch I challenge you guys to, to make Jesus Christ your greatest treasure this year. Um, your greatest treasure and to um, really... Uh, take hold of that hope to take hold of of that gift um and really it is a gift that that jesus would come that he would live he would die he would be resurrected that we might have life in him what a gift um but that we don't have to be afraid to give up anything and everything for the sake of him you know what uh you know what is it to to you know How's the line go that, uh, you know, Jim Elliott, you know, he's no fool who uh, gives up. Um, I, I can't remember. It. You, you can look it up. Anyways, but um, no, we, we, we look at that and we say Jesus is our greatest treasure. And so just like the man who uh, finds a treasure in the field, he, he sells everything he has and he buys that field you know, we too, you know, can give up everything because Jesus is worth more than everything else combined. And so, um, you know, we, we do that. Today, we're going to look at 
um, you know, uh, something that I think is, is critical, and, and it is, it's vital to our health, um, vital to our life in Christ. And, and so typically, think about this, um, I, I, uh, I tend to, uh, I tend to be around people in life um, that uh, will say, hey, I, uh, I'm having um, computer problems. Now, uh, I, I will admit from time to time I have had some computer problems. Um, you know, I know technology is a, is a great thing, but it's not a great thing when it doesn't work right. And, uh, and so <clears throat> typically, you know, when people have computer problems, what is the first thing that uh, somebody will ask you? You know, they're going to try and uh, troubleshoot, uh, you know, your, your issue here. And what do they say? The first thing they say is, have you tried turning it off and turning back, turning it back on. Um, they'll, they'll say, have you rebooted it? Um, you know, now typically they, they mean, um, you know, with the actual, uh, you know, the button here, right. You know, shut it down, all that. Um, some people are just like, man, I just pulled the cord right out of the wall. And that's, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Um, but that's typically how they, they fix the computer. And, and a lot of, you know, that's how they'll start, you know, at least they'll start from that place. Um, you know, when it comes to fixing a car, um, which I know like nothing about, I mean, I know very little about cars, but typically, you know, you have a car, they say, well, Hey, what's it doing? You know, whatever. And a lot of times they'll, they'll say, well, Hey, shut it off or Hey, turn it, start it up. You know, it's always kind of involving this restarting, you know, like, uh, they'll, they'll, then they'll say something like, Hey, pop the hood and they're going to look, you know, first thing. And, um, you know, and so you know, as we look at our, at our life, as you look at your life, as I look at my life and we say, man, um, you know, I'm not bearing spiritual fruit the way I want to be bearing spiritual fruit. Uh, I'm not satisfied, um, you know, in my, in my life, um, I have stalled out spiritually. Um, the first thing, you know, they'll say is, well, we need to reset the system. You know, we need to reset which is what we're doing, you know, here in this series. But uh, then we'll take a look inside. And the first thing we look at is your heart. You know, we'll say, check your heart. Um, and so uh, if you have your Bible with you today, I want you to open up uh, the word here. We're going to go to um, Ezekiel. It's in the uh, Old Testament. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 36. And we're going to begin in verse 22. So Ezekiel 36, 22. And we're just going to read uh, a little bit here um, out of the book of Ezekiel, and uh, and let me uh, let me pull this up here. But anyways, yeah, we're going to read a little bit out of the book of Ezekiel today, thirty six. We're going to begin in verse twenty two. So here um, is what the Lord says. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the Lord God says. It is not for your sake that I will act, house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you profaned among the nations where you went. I will honor the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. The name you have profaned among them. The nations will know that I am the Lord. This is the declaration of the Lord God. When I demonstrate my holiness through you in their sight. And then verse 24 here, here's what it says. For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I gave your ancestors and you will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will summon the grain and make it plentiful and I will not bring famine on you. I will also make 
the, the fruit of the trees and the produce of the field plentiful so that you will no longer experience reproach among the nations on account of famine. Thanks be to God for his word. So we have Ezekiel writing here and, uh, you know, we have this, uh, this message here. This is, uh, this is, uh, 590 something BC, right? Um, this is, uh, you know, somewhere here, uh, you know, 570, 590, somewhere in there. Um, and Ezekiel is writing <clears throat> this and we understand that the, uh, the people of Israel, you know, they have experienced um, hardship, right? They have been conquered. They have, uh, they have gone into exile. They have been scattered among the nations. And uh, they, are, uh, they are certainly, they're not happy about it, right? They're living as slaves in foreign lands with foreign languages and foreign people. And they are not, um, they, it, things aren't going the way they wanted them to. Um, things are not uh, going great. And so, uh, well, what happens is, is, is that, that they, they end up, I mean, taking on these other gods, these other idols, these other things. Clearly, they're like, hey, our God, they, our God didn't do uh, what we wanted him to do. So, you know, we're going to try all these other things. We're going to, you know, and the whole, the whole point of them being conquered in general was, was basically their unfaithfulness to God. Um, you know, that, that they had, uh, you know, essentially, um, you know, gone after other idols. They had gone after other things. And so that's why they ended up in the situation in the first place. But um, God has this, this, this faithfulness to his people, right? He has this faithfulness, this love that, that endures forever. And so what he does is he says here through, through Ezekiel, he says, he says, this is what God says. Okay, this is what He says. He says, "It's for, it's for my name, not your name." Okay, it's for my name, my greatness, not your greatness. It's for my sake and not your sake. Um, the the point here being is that um, these people, the people of Israel, and the same thing's true of us, right? We deserve nothing. We deserve nothing. Um, God is so great and we are so not. And, and in God's greatness though, in God's greatness, he shows love and mercy. And so what does he say here? He says, he says, um, you know, that it is, uh, he says, I will honor the holiness of my great name. You know, it's for, uh, not for your sake that I'm going to act, but for my holy name there and so you know i think you know well what how does this apply to us well we have to look at you know when we look at our lives okay we have to look at um you know when we when we look at a reset when we're trying to reset our lives okay we have to look at our lives and we have to say you know i have to be able to recognize what is alive and what is not what is living and what is dead what is bearing fruit in my life and what is not bearing fruit. And so the first thing I want us to see here is we have to recognize deadness for what it is. Okay. We have to recognize deadness in our lives. You know, the people of Israel here, <clears throat> they're in this foreign land. They are, uh, you know, they, not much is working for them, right? Not much is working for them. And, um, yet everything they try, it doesn't work out, you know, everything they try. And so, And so it's God working on their behalf that will fix their problem. That's why we need a savior. And so um, the first thing we need to recognize um, deadness. We need to recognize sin for what it is. God takes sin very seriously here, right? What's he say? He says, he says, my name has been profaned among the nations. You know, he, he talks about idols. <clears throat> he talks about how, you know, they have gone after these, um, these other gods, these other idols. They have, they have made that. And, and we, we have done the same thing, you know, in our lives. 
we have idols that exist. Do we recognize them most times? Probably not, but we do. Um, I think the same, you know, I, I mean, we look at the, the events of this week, um, you know, the things that happened at the Capitol, um, all that, um, <clears throat> people acting out in ways that they never would have acted out before, probably. But the facts are, is, is, as I said on Wednesday, and as I said, um, you know, last Sunday, was when, when we realize, when we see um, how angry or how upset we get when something is taken away, when something is, is, doesn't go the way we want it to, when something gets removed, that level of anger, that level of sadness, that level of emotion is usually indicative of something that is an idol in our lives. And so many people, you know, they have made, you know, whether it be politics an idol, they have made, um, you know, uh, health and, and other things, you know, it, that's why it's so important that, that Jesus is our greatest treasure, that Jesus is our greatest treasure. And so, um, you know, in, in Ezekiel 36 here, you know, he, he talks about, you know, that they have these idols and, um, you know, that they have, uh, they have become so unclean, right? And so we have to recognize, you know, we have to, we have to take sin as seriously as God takes it. We need to be able to call sin, sin. I mean, what does Jesus say? Well, he says, Hey, you know, if you're, you're, if your right hand causes you to sin, what do you do? Cut it off. I mean, that I, I know I know that that may not necessarily be what he's you know actually saying here, but he's saying, hey, take sin seriously. I don't think the idea was that people would be walking around with no eye, you know, only one eye, you know, carving out their eye and, and cutting off hands. And it wasn't that we would be walking around like, you know, I don't know, land of the living dead kind of thing, but but that we would that we would um, take sin seriously. And I think too often we try and make excuses for our sin. We try and justify our sin. We try and, uh, and say, and, and yet Jesus, Jesus, he, he came that we might um, be uh, cleansed of our sin. He came that we might be cleansed of our sin. You know, in fact, Jesus, you know, a lot of times we were like, well, hey, I'm going to have my sin here and I'm going to add a little Jesus to it. And it doesn't work like that. You know, because Jesus, you know, we're, we're not just bad, we're dead. We're dead without Christ. C.S. Lewis says, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good, but to make dead people alive. And so, um, you know, first we have to recognize just our situation, our condition, you know, recognize what is dead in our lives. And for some of us, you know, you may look at your life and you may be like, man, oh my gosh, I am spiritually dead. I'm, the whole thing is dead. You know, it's not just like a branch. It's the whole tree. The whole tree is dead. Well, you know, at that point, once we recognize, you know, our condition, we repent. The next thing we do is we, we repent. We, we ask God to remove that which is dead and replace it with new life. We recognize, you know, we talked about uh, a few months ago when we talked about abiding in Christ, how, you know, there is no life apart from him. There's no life apart from him. And, and at the same way, you know, um, we can't make ourselves clean. But what does God say here in, in Ezekiel 36? He says, he says, I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you and you're going to be clean. He says, I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to save you. Verse 29, I will save you from all your uncleanness. You know, he says um, in verse uh, 25, I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. We may not be able to do it ourselves, and we certainly can't. Um, we can't make ourselves uh, clean any more than we can make ourselves alive. But Jesus came for that very reason. Jesus came for that. You know, we know that Jesus came to us. We know that he dwells among us. We know that he died for us, but he must do a salvation work in us. It can't just be something that we know um, in life. 
you know, that we know, oh, yeah, Jesus came, he died, you know, for sins, blah, 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 blah. But we have to know him as our Savior personally. A personal Savior. His Holy Spirit must dwell in us. And so, you know, after we recognize and after we repent, we have to receive. We have to receive that grace. And it is a grace because, again, we deserve nothing. Grace is an unmerited, undeserved gift. And that is exactly what God is doing for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's exactly what God is doing. What does he say here? He says, he says, I am going to take you from the nations and I'm going to gather you to myself. Man, what a beautiful thing. He's going to gather us to himself. He says, I'm going to take you and I'm going to bring you into your own land. I'm going to bless you. What reason did they have for being blessed? No reason at all. But God is going to do it because that's who God is. And God loves us. And I mean, it's just mind-blowing that God would love such a disobedient people, such a hard-hearted people. But notice, he's not going to leave them like that. It's not like, oh man, I love you uh, in spite of those things, um, which he, I mean, he does. But he says, I'm not going to leave you like that, right? He's going he's gonna to clean us. He's going to sprinkle water on us. He's going to uh, cleanse us from our impurities and our idols. And man, sometimes that hurts, right? We can recognize, you know, sometimes that hurts. I mean, I remember when I was back in uh, middle school. This, this, uh, <laughs> this story. I don't. I, I tell you, I never thought. You know, you know, you go through experiences and you say, "Man, this is never going to um, be important um, ever in life." Um, but for some reason it just stuck with me, this story, and I don't know why, um, but I'm going to share it with you. So there we go. Uh, so, uh, middle school, they brought in some, uh, motivational speaker and we had an assembly and, uh, there's a motivational speaker. And this lady was like, she was like this, uh, oh, I don't know. I guess she was, she was a biker and she was a biker chick. Not like a, not like a Lance Armstrong kind of person. You know, we're talking like, you know, Harley kind of bike, you know, motorcycle uh, type person. And she talked about um, road rash. Again, I don't know why this was very important to middle schoolers. Um, I think I do when we get to the end, but you know, at the time I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so she talked about when you lay your bike down and it goes sliding across the pavement, you know, you get road rash. And when you go into the hospital, sure, they could sew you up and that would be fine. Um, however, it wouldn't be fine in the long run because it could kill you. Because what happens with road rash is you get pizza, pieces of asphalt, you get pieces of um, concrete, whatever, inside your body. And so what they have to do is they got to go in and they got to scrub that wound they gotta, they gotta scrub it right on out, um, and in fact, it hurts probably more in the hospital than it did on the road. Um, and yet, we look at this and we see. I, I read this and I'm like, man, like, oh my gosh, this is, this is what God does to us. I think a lot of times we say, man, I don't want that. You know, it's like a kid fighting a bath or something, you know, like, hey, I don't want, I don't want you to do that. But it's like, man, like that's the way it has to be. That's the way that the only way that I can live. The only way God is going to do for us what is necessary. And so he, uh, he, he scrapes out that, that uncleanness. He sc gets rid of those impurities um, he removes those idols. And again, the, that hurts sometimes. Again, as we look at the, the context of the last week, it hurts sometimes, um, you know, when our idols get removed. But what does he do in verse 26? It says, I will give you a new heart. A new heart. Where, where my heart had been hard, I'm going to get a, a soft heart. Where my heart... Uh, had been uh, of stone, a heart of stone. I'm going to get a heart of flesh. He's going to remove our heart and he's going to put in a new heart. 
the heart, the old heart, you know, used to beat for other things. I'm going to give you a new heart and it's only going to beat for me. God says, I'm going to give you a new heart. And this heart is going to uh, be in tune with mine. I'm going to give you a new heart. Um, you know, and this heart is going to be alive where your other heart brought about deadness. This new heart is going to pump my life through you. Uh, man, what a beautiful um, thought there. You know, one scholar here says, in the ancient world, uh, the heart was the center for volition and the intellectual catalyst for feeling and action. A heart of stone implied inflexibility and willfulness while a heart of flesh meant submission and compliance the old heart was broken the old heart was rebellious my old heart was dead in its sins and transgressions but god in his mercy god in his grace is going to put a new heart in you and a new heart in me if we repent if we turn to him he is going to do all of that for us and he is going to place his life in us. Verse 27, I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. You're going to live in the land that I give you and I'm going to save you. And I'm not just going to do that, but I'm also going to make it be plentiful. The land's going to bear fruit. You're going to bear fruit. The land's going to bear fruit. Everything's going to be plenty. I mean, this is a picture of grace upon grace upon grace, but we, it starts with us recognizing our deadness, repenting from our sin, turning to him, receiving his grace. And what's it look like after that? Well, we have a heart that is like his, a heart that beats for him. And so we reflect his glory we reflect his glory we recognize we repent we receive the last thing is we reflect his glory think of it think of it like the the moon right the moon the people see the light in the sky at night they're like man the moon is beautiful the moon, the moon is so bright the moon is all these things and yet the moon has no light of its own the moon has no light of its own the moon merely reflects the light of the sun. People see it, and yet that moon is doing what it was meant to do, which is reflect the light of the sun. And, and the same thing is true of us, is that we are to reflect the glory of God. People might see us, and they would see our God. You know, uh, verse 27, I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. He says, I'm going to bring you, bring you into the land, right? And verse 30 says, I will also make the fruit of the trees and the produce of the field plentiful so that you will no longer experience reproach among the nations. All the nations are going to see this. All the nations are going to see this. They're going to see you and they're going to see me and they're going to see him in us. They're going to see the glory of God revealed because we have a heart that he put in us. He put breath in our lungs and he, they are going to see that displayed among the nations, man. What a, what a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. You know, we are, you know, today we are, we are, we are right there. You know, we are, we are able to turn to God. We are able to, you know, uh, be, you know, that could happen today. All this thing, all these things can happen today, you know, and so uh, we just have to uh, make that decision. And so I would encourage you today, you know, as you take inventory of your life, as you take a look at yours, you know, recognize what areas of sin you have, what areas of deadness in your life exist, and to ask God to replace that, ask God to rejuvenate that, ask God to uh, revitalize that, to regenerate life. 
And maybe you're like, hey, man, I am dead in my sins and trespasses. Um, you can receive new life today. You can be a new creation today by turning to Jesus Christ. But for all of us, especially for New Bethel, our mission here at New Bethel is to know Christ and to make him known. This is the way we do it. We have God change our hearts so that our lives might display what he has done in us. So that our lives might reflect his glory both here and among the nations. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every knee will bow before Jesus Christ the King. Let's go ahead and pray. God, we give you thanks. We thank you, God, that you show us this extravagant love, this extravagant mercy, this grace, grace upon grace that we have received. And God, I pray that we would not um, toss that aside, that we would not be hard-hearted. God, I pray that you would remove our hard hearts. You would replace them with hearts of flesh. God, I pray that you would make us new where newness needs to come about in our lives. God, I pray that you would make it so. God, I pray that you would uh, help us to, um, as we evaluate our lives, that we would be able to recognize what areas, what specific things we need to give up, things that we need to uh, cast out of our lives. But God, we recognize that you are the one to do that work. You make us clean. So Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you to do a work in us. We invite you to do a work in our hearts, in our minds. May you make us look like you. May you remove that which is hurting us, that which is hurtful to others, that which is hurtful to you, God. And may you replace it with newness, with love and joy and peace and patience, and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. God, that you would do that in us, that all might see us and recognize that it is a work of you. Where we couldn't do it for ourselves, you did it for us because that is who you are. You are good and you are faithful. God, help us, give us new life, and help us to reset with our lives in 2021, built by you and built on your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm so glad that we got to spend this time together. Uh, if you, uh, if you would like to, uh, again, if you'd like to give, uh, you know, encourage you to visit our website, uh, newbethelbaptist.com slash donate. Um, but if this was beneficial to you, would encourage you to like, uh, comment and share this on your page, um, so that others might hear this message as well. I want to encourage you this week you know, to reflect uh, the glory of the Lord as he intended to show him off uh, in your work at home um, and with those you come in contact with. Have a great week and we will be right back here on Wednesday at noon for midweek Bible and prayer. We'll see you guys very soon. Take care.